Welcome. We are so excited to celebrate with all of you a community gem. We've been waiting a long time for this building. It's been the, the topic of much conversation, much imagination, much dreaming. It's how we as a college can work with the, college, with the community to improve Southern Maryland and especially Calvert County. We are just so excited about this, this day. Uh, we put up many buildings over the past uh, many years. This one we are ver really excited about and this one we're gonna remember because it posed some special challenges. So as we enjoy it and we use it, we're going to also remember that this was not an easy project. And I wanna thank the architects, I wanna thank um, uh, the, um, the general contractor, and I'll mention their names in a little bit, uh, for their hard work. Flagship building, when I first came to the, oh, by the way, I'm Brad Gottfried, I'm the president <laughs> of the college, sorry. I'm excited. But when I came in 2006 and had the pro privilege to be selected as uh, the uh, fourth president of the College of Southern Maryland, and the first time I saw the flagship building, I should say the flagship building, it, it literally took my breath away. I've not seen a more magnificent building than that one. And quite frankly, every time I see it, I'm also so impressed by its beauty and its functionality. Well, it would always whisper to me, it would say, you know, it's kind of lonely out here. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to have some company? And so here we have some wonderful company for that building. And as, we know, as the commissioners know, um, when, this, when this campus, this wonderful campus is fully built out, out, there will be five buildings here. And it will become even more functional than it is today. So we're moving in that direction and we are really excited about it. Um, today we have a who's who of, of dignitaries and, and individuals, and I, I wish I could mention all of their names, but I do want to mention uh, a few of them. So settle in, get comfortable. You're going to hear from some of them, um, such as uh, Senator Roy Dyson is with us today, um, Anthony O'Donnell you'll be hearing from today, um, Johnny Wood you won't be hearing from today, but... Um, you know, what a wonderful um, representative of our region. Uh, you'll be hearing from our county commissioner president, Pat Nutter, in a little bit. We have all of our other commissioners, I think all of our commissioners here today. Um, uh, Vice President uh, of the board, uh, Steve Weems, is with us today. Um, commissioner Susan Shaw. We have Evans Lagenhop. And we have, um, I think I got them all, and Jerry Clark. I don't want to forget Jerry Clark. Um, we also have from the school board uh, several uh, elected officials. Uh, the vice president of the school board is Kelly McConkey, And I believe that um, uh, Eugene Carroll is here. And I think you're the, are you the chairman, the president of the, of the board? That's great. Thank you for being here. Also with us is another school board member, Dawn Belinsky. And... We're really excited to have our, our new interim superintendent of schools. We've already had some conversations with her, uh, Nancy Highsmith. So thank you very much for being here, Nancy. Uh, Linda Kelly is here. And Linda was here along with, uh, with uh, Susan Shaw and others, Jerry Clark, as we were planning this building. And I want to thank um, her also for, for being here today. You're going to hear from uh, Devin Dodson, Chief of, of Staff of the Maryland Energy Administration. So you'll be seeing him a little bit. Uh, we have trustees, my bosses, so I want to make sure I, I cover all of them. Our board chair is Mike Middleton. You'll be hearing from him in a little bit. Uh, Dorothea Smith is with us today. Uh, Lois Dean Natale. Uh, MacArthur Jones, is Mac here? Oh, there he is. And I'm going to... Uh, before I forget, I know I, for, I will forget, uh, Mac is stepping down as a trustee after many years at the college, and I just want to personally thank him for his service. Uh, there are few people that are as committed as Mac MacArthur Jones, and he did so much to get us to where we are as a college, and I want to thank you personally. Thank you. I should mention that Dorothea Smith is our vice chair. Um, 
John, Dr. John Roach is with us today, as is Dr. Janice Waldauer. And past uh, board members are Jamie Raley is with us, as well as um, a Rick Bailey is with us, and Joe Slater, who was a uh, former board chair as well. Our foundation members, Jay Lilly is the uh, chairman of our foundation board, Greg Cockerham, um, Alfreda Mathis is with us, Robert Price, um, Joe Slater I mentioned, Rini Cunningham, former director is with us. Um, George Gelrich, you're going to be hearing from him in a little bit, uh, who's vice president of the site vice president of Constellation CNG, so you'll hear from him in a little bit. Jim Rupkowski, what can I say about Jim Rupkowski? Uh, very active, very supportive, this nuclear energy tr uh, technician program. It wouldn't be here without Jim Rupkowski, and I want to thank him uh, for being here and for all of his service. Mark Simpson on our Academic Advisory Council is here. We have Carolyn Hart, who is the Chamber of Commerce President in Calvert County. Welcome. Gary Kessler, um, who is the, I want to make sure I get it right, Executive Director of NALC AD at Pax River. Very instrumental in our joint program in engineering, training engineers for, for the base. And I want to thank you for being here and all you've done. Bonnie Green. Wonderful partnership with the Patuxent Partnerships uh, par Partnership. She's the executive director. Our um, our administrator in Calvert County is here, and that's Terry Shannon, who um, has been a wonderful representative of, of the um, elected officials and has worked with us all along the way to make sure that this building was going to happen. I want to thank her for that. And across the river is Deb Hudson. Uh, she is the new deputy county, county administrator of Charles County. It means a lot that she's here because we are truly a regional college. Um, Jim Zinnis is here. I'm very pleased to see Jim, uh, who is the uh, president of Calvert Memorial Hospital. Spence Taintor, who's the president um, of, uh, or the head of the Calverton School. Thank you, uh, Spence. And just a few others. We have um, Carrie Plymeyer, who I haven't met yet, who's heading up. I'm going to meet you, um, uh, the uh, Calvert County Libraries, and um, a wonderful addition to, uh, to Southern Maryland. We also have uh, Brian Hartz, and Brian is coming with a check. So he is from Day and Zimmerman, and uh, they are, have been very generous in supporting our nuclear energy technician programs with scholarships. And I, I want to uh, have a special... Um, word for the architects. Um, the building was designed by Kieran uh, Wilmer, Wilms, is Kieran, where are you? If you would stand. Thank you. And um, also, uh, is Dave Corbett here? Oh, Dave is here, who actually handled the, the site construction. And Anthony uh, Lucarelli is also here. We've had some good meetings with him. And finally, um, I want, to, I want to thank personally uh, one of the partners of GF and G, GFG, uh, the contractor, Tommy Gugliotta, who worked tirelessly to get this building completed. Where is Tommy? If you would stand and be recognized. Thank you, Tommy. Now, Tommy may not m want me to mention this. <clears throat> but I was coming through the building one day during construction, and there's Tommy with a paintbrush in his hand, um, putting some finishing touches on. This is a man and his brother, Frank, who um, they don't sit in an office. They're actually there on site, and I want to thank you, Tommy. Um, and if I, if I forgot anyone, please uh, excuse me. The building, this building, and everything we do could not have been uh, happening. This building couldn't occur without our commissioners. Lots of partners, but our commissioners, they've always been there for us. They have the vision, they have the, the understanding of the needs of, of Calvert County citizens. I was going to do some calculations to determine how much Calvert County citizens save every year by us being here offering the programs that they need, and it's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I want to thank the commissioners, both present and past, for their vision and for their ongoing support. Thank you very, very much. Um, 
and we'll be talking soon about a third building. <laughs> so stay tuned. I also want to thank our state delegation. Uh, this building is part of being a regional campus, and so therefore the state contributes 75% of the cost of construction. Our county commissioners need to operate it, and they pay 25% of the cost of construction. Our delegation uh, were very instrumental in getting us that 75%. I want to thank them as well. Other partners, um, CENG, Constellation. Um, constant conversations in terms of how do we help build the workforce of the future. Um, organizations or projects such as Ward Verts. I see Bud Verts and his, and, uh, Verts and his wife here. Um, we have wonderful partnerships. And these partnerships are not just in the academic arena. They're not just in building buildings. They're also in cultural uh, interactions and cultural affairs. And um, the piano, the Bosendorfer piano that, um, that Rich um, so cherishes is here, locked away, nice and protected. And if you've not been to one of our Ward Verse concert series, um, it's not to be missed, especially when um, when Brian Gantz comes in, I know Rich is going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, lots and lots of partners, lots of people to recognize. And I'm going to call up um, in a few minutes uh, Rich Fleming uh, and have special remarks for him because this building could not have been uh, here today without his hard work. Um, this building is uh, very special in a variety of reasons. I don't know if anyone can identify. It's probably in the program. It's about 30,000 square feet of space. And because of it, we're able to expand the offerings. We're able to do things we couldn't do. One of the things we're able to do is right here. Typically, if this were a typical building, we'd be outside broiling in the hot sun. But here we can be in a wonderful multi-purpose room. This room is the community's room. Yes, we're going to use it. But this is a room that's open to the community. And my wife, Linda, I don't know where she is. She was going to be um, uh, using it for the first time back in, I guess, April when we thought we were going to open back then. Um, we see nonprofits using this room on a regular basis to uh, the Chamber of Commerce to enrich the community. Um, we, I've talked about the um, trades and energy, um, excuse me, the, the nuclear energy training program. Uh, was in rented space, many of you may remember it, by Adam's Rib Restaurant. Um, it was fine for a temporary space. Now we have a state-of-the-art facility, 3,000 square feet, um, and we use Constellation. They helped us to build the, the facility of the future that not only can we use, but hopefully they'll use to train their current employees. Um, other organ, other um, uh, Functions of the building is, is, is an expanded uh, wellness center and fitness center. We actually had converted a classroom, which didn't really work. And now we have a very nice facility for, uh, for our students and for the community. And of course, um, the classrooms and the labs. So students will be able to get the programs they need here in Calvert County, rather than uh, having to go across the, one of the bridges. And that's very important to us. One of, the, one of the real tragedies, one of the secrets that's no longer a secret is what's going on with regard to student debt. I don't know if you've heard this, but the student loan debt in this country exceeds a trillion dollars. It, it exceeds credit card debt. And this college and this campus is making a difference. We are then saving students. A student, for instance, is going to save twenty-nine to thirty thousand dollars a year if they want to get a baccalaureate degree at, at College Park. Come here, two years, go up to College Park, save thirty thousand dollars. That's a loan that um, that these students no, don't need to uh, to uh, incur. And we have a wide variety of transfer institutions, twenty-five of them, where immediately our students move effortlessly into these institutions. The most recent one is the one with Howard University. You may have read about that. We just signed that agreement a couple weeks ago. One of our surveys, our latest survey, showed that one cohort of students uh, attended, after they left us, 
They attended 110 different colleges in 31 different states. They go everywhere and they do well everywhere. Um, and lastly, I just want to mention, and this is, this is Rich's baby, so I'm sure he's going to want to talk a little bit more about it. Um, but Rich will tell you, are you going to talk about the LEED certified building or should I mention that briefly? You're going to talk about that? Okay. So this is a LEED certified building and that's also distinctive. We're going to let Rich talk to you about that. So for me, this is just a, a very special day because it's not just a building, it's not the bricks and mortar. It's the promise of being able to provide the kinds of learning experiences, the cultural programming and the space that our community needs and deserves. And I'm looking over at Carolyn McHugh and I'm saying, oh, I should have recognized you as the past president of the Chamber of Commerce. I apologize. Oh, and I'll bet there's somebody else. Ah, thank you. And John Bohannon, where's John? Ah, John Bohannon, um, one of our esteemed delegates, thank you, is, is with us today. Uh, very supportive of higher education in Southern Maryland and how can we ensure that all of our students have access to a baccalaureate degree and we're able to uh, provide jobs for, for everyone. Well, with that, oh, flip it over. Oh, okay. And we have, do you want to, um, do you want to bring it up? Okay. Well, this may be the appropriate time, because I'm just going to give the microphone over to my boss, Mike Middleton. Mike, why don't you come on up for your remarks? And John, why don't you come up? Yeah, you have it? Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm a little bit hurried today, but uh, I'm very, very pleased to be here with so many distinguished guests, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, Mr. Senator, Delegate, all the commissioners, and uh, all those distinguished individuals who, who have come together to join us on a very special occasion and uh, recognize the growing campus that this uh, very new campus, this really has to be probably the newest campus in the state of Maryland that uh, has sort of sprung up over the last several years and uh, dedicate yet another facility and a beautiful facility. I'm here representing today Congressman Steny Hoyer and um, unfortunately I'm going to have to leave early but so I appreciate you fitting me in. I have a U.S. flag to present, which has been flown over the U.S. Capitol, and also a uh, citation from Congressman Hoyer, which uh, I won't read, but uh, it basically says congratulations on behalf of Congressman Hoyer and the U.S. Congress. And uh, Congressman Hoyer sends his best regards. Uh, obviously, he's been supportive and instrumental in working with you to, to make sure this happened and, and this program got underway. And uh, let me just say on behalf of the Maryland House of Delegates, several years ago as the economy began to tank and our revenues tanked, one of the things that we made a conscious decision to do was keep funding capital projects and in fact step up some of the capital projects uh, at a time when we were getting a better deal because of low interest rates and also uh, less competition frankly within the construction industry. And this project was one of the ones that benefited from accelerating those for the community colleges that uh, we were able to do over uh, at a time when we thought it was important to do. So I congratulate all of you for the uh, role that all of you had or the role that you will have in uh, populating th this building and making it a great uh, asset, not just for Calvert County, but for the entire community and indeed for the, uh, for the nation. So thank you very much. Good to be with you. And I'll present this, I guess, to the chairman. Yes. Thank you very much. Sure. You know, I've been a trustee, I mean, for like six years, I think, and I've been chair for about uh, 60, 70 days. And um, when Julie, who's on our board from uh, Calvert County, was showing me the containment reactor, uh, containment whatever of the reactor, I realized what a trustee has to do at the college. Have you ever tried to contain a nuclear energy theory? This guy is a dynamo. And, and from uh, and my uh, opportunity up here is to just give you a perspective from the Board of Trustees. Uh, we all take our jobs very seriously. We're greatly honored to, to just be entrusted with such a dynamic organization. It's just an eye-opener. And to Mac, um, this is a quiet gentleman who just sits there and he, 
he says the right word at the right second, and he just nods, and you know, if, he's not, if Mac's nodding about it, you, you really want to pay attention. So thank you very much, Mac. Uh, the campus, as you know, has been here, um, gee, originally, what, 1995, I think, 1997, the property was built. I actually ran into the realtor who handled the deal for the college, uh, Tom Axley, and he was telling me about it. But, um, but the flagship, right, is exactly correct. It's absolutely fabulous. Uh, what has been done and the concepts of the architectural concepts that have, that have, been, have been used throughout all the campuses is uh, remarkable. Um, our students have um, grown, they have been very well educated. Uh, we are now um, opening a very green building and I know Rich is going to be talking about this so I can just take that point off that Kim put on here. Um, it, this begins the look of a campus and we're very, very excited about this. And with five buildings coming, uh, you can see that the trustees have their job. Uh, it's going to be a tough job containing, because he would like to have uh, all five buildings built today. <laughs> so um, believe me, for the delegation, we're really working hard to contain this, this nuclear uh, energy here. Uh, the potential, the trustees see the potential of uh, the college. It's just every day, every meeting we have, we get another program or another opportunity or another uh, association with folks that uh, the college uh, folks are working on to just increase the uh, ability of our students to succeed. It's quite remarkable. I've been involved with the college for many, many, many years. Um, and it's just, it's like watching your kids grow up, if you will. As Brad mentioned, we are a major economic engine for Southern Maryland, and uh, we are the number one provider of um, career programs and training. And thank God for the community college system during this crisis. You all know the role which we had to play, and Brad and his team stepped up. We're going to put this program, we're going to put this training, and we're going to get this affiliation down so that people can, in fact, get an education, an affordable education, and become and continue to be productive citizens. Uh, one little statistic I might give you, the, I don't know if you know this, but um, the average income at career midpoint for someone with just an associate's degree is 35% higher than a, that of a high school student. It's quite remarkable. And also, to our delegation again, when they earn more, the tax base goes up and you can do more good. More good if that's not quite uh, grammatically correct. You can do much more better, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> God bless you real well. Is that, I, I, know who's, I know whose country I'm in right now. <laughs> now, as your community bank, I want to tell you that I have a couple of statistics for you. Uh, we talk about return on investment. CSM is a wonderful return on investment. Uh, for every student that invests in a tuition uh, program here, it's a 15% return on their investment with their earnings potential. Uh, the average rate of return uh, for the state and local governments is well over 10% return. It comes back many fold for it to be recycled. It's, it's, we call it a multiplier effect. The multiplier effect of a community college uh, tuition uh, dollar is quite significant, 15 to 1. It's just quite significant. So uh, it is with great honor that we, the trustees, uh, serve uh, on, on as, as your trustees for the, the college. And we, again, take it very, very seriously. Uh, but have you just ever tried to keep a light in the box? It's not possible. Uh, we're excited about what's going on in the future. Uh, I wish you would come and watch how um, Brad and your team works is, uh, with the students. They care about each and every student that comes through the door. It is truly amazing. So uh, we're blessed. We're quite blessed. And with that, I want to congratulate Calvary County. And I want to congratulate CSM, and thank you so much for your support. Now, it's my honor to um, ask a couple of our speakers to come up and, and give their greetings. We have the Commissioner, Pat Nutter, uh, and then following that, with Devin Dotson will be here, and, and after that, Senator Dyson, and then Tony, I think, you'll be uh, at that after that. So if you join the podium, we'd be happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Doctor, I take this is really a thrilling honor for me. Even though I didn't start it, you know, the Calvary County Commissioner certainly started this a few years ago before I was there. This has been very exciting. 
for a lot of reasons, not only as a county commissioner, but as a citizen in this county. So this school means a lot to a lot of people. I know uh, it seemed like yesterday, but my granddaughter was graduating from Calvert High. And, because, and, and like many young people, first thing she did, she's picking up these uh, college applications for like Hawaii. <laughs> and <clears throat> finally we said, you know, it would be better if you went to the College of Southern Maryland and then think about Hawaii. So I'm proud to say that in December, she'll get her associates from here and then is going, I believe, to Maryland Baltimore section. So I'm real happy and by that time my grandson should be coming in. So I know how it is. The last two years, and, and I know I told Rick, and I think I told Dr. Godfrey, you know, I go to all the high school graduations, and you know, you get a program, but there's one school in particular in Calvert that it lists what the seniors or where they're gonna go to school after they graduate. And I came back really excited because there were over 60 some high school graduates from just one of the four high schools in this county said that they were coming right here. And that's a proud moment. And it just makes me feel good to come by here. And I'm talking about all the county commissioners because we, we have spoken about this and we've all been excited and we've all put our hearts into it and the boards before us, you know, as you can see, and our state delegates, you know, uh, for sure, and the dedicated work that the educators do in this county. I'm just proud that I'm uh, a resident of this county, and I'm proud I can be part of the government, and I'm proud that uh, uh, the, to be open to everyone who, who needs me and help as long as I can. Again, congratulations, and thank you for this wonderful building, because I thought we were outside, too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Devin Dodson. I'm uh, with the Maryland Energy Administration and I have the pleasure of bringing greetings from Governor O'Malley uh, for this wonderful dedication. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, from the Energy Administration's perspective, we could talk about the LEED certification of the building, we could talk about all the energy efficiency measures, but the reality for me personally, for me personally, and in representing uh, the governor is the amazing, amazing jobs that are going to come, not only from the building of this building, but from all the students that are going to matriculate through here and then go on and uh, really represent the county and the region well. Um, economic growth uh, for this county is critical. It's critical for the entire state, really. But something like this, a beautiful building, a beautiful showcase building that is really going to attract not only students from that you just heard from Calvert and the region, but from all over Maryland. I think we should all be proud of and we should all we should all celebrate. So I'm looking forward to watching the third building, the fourth building, the fifth building get built and coming back down to do all of those irrespective of whether I'm allowed to or not because from my <laughs> boss. So thank you all very much for having me and uh, this is very exciting. Thanks. Anybody remember Dr. Carsey? Well, some of you do. You know, I got elected in 1974. The <laughs> Linda, you still have me beat. Anyway, uh, I got a call from Dr. Carsey to come to La Plata, Mitchell Road, and to have a meeting with him. And I had the privilege of sitting next to John, Senator John Thomas' parent. In fact, I was thinking about it on the way over today, Dr. Uh, Godfrey. I think of that group, probably Senator Simpson and I are probably the only ones left, but anyway, you don't have to nod there. Uh, <laughs> I understand that part. I'll never forget it because, you know, we obviously had a conversation about the college. In, in the middle of the meeting, uh, Nancy Carsey came into the room. Well, Nancy Carsey didn't just walk in the room. She sort of flew into the room. She had sort of this leopard type dress, you know, I don't know anything, a damn thing about fashion. <laughs> she walks in, she had just, I think she had just gotten her PhD or noticed that she was going to get her doctorate. And so I turned around to John Thomas, and I looked at him and said, who the hell's that? 
And I'm 24 and a half years old, you know, and I'm going, he says, <clears throat> that's the president's wife, and she shouldn't be here. Well, of course, she danced all around the room and told us all what she thought, and I'm sitting here today, and I'm looking around, and I was listening to, to Brad, and I'm listening to all the other speakers, and I'm thinking, damn, we had no idea at that time this, that this is what it would turn out to be. That little school, and I thought it was a big school at the time, but that little school on Mitchell Road turned out campuses in Waldorf, Leonardtown, uh, here in Prince Frederick. Uh, I'm probably missing a few <laughs> somewhere along the line. This is what we have. And one of the greatest things about it, because I know I was up there last night on that damn thing called the Beltway, is that our students don't have to risk their life to go up there to get one of the schools in that area. Yeah, I see you nodding your head. Absolutely, that's the case. This is a fantastic place. And I want to bring up this issue. I saw this thing in the paper the other day. Uh, it was in the Washington Post. Obama plans to rate colleges. He's made a pledge to begin federal ratings of colleges by 2015. Now, the story goes on to say it's touched off debate. Well, it's done more than touched off debate amongst the four-year colleges and universities. One of the things, though, this, the story goes on, it says Obama aims to use executive authority to begin rating colleges by the fall of 2015 on criteria such as average tuition, scholarships, loan debt, the share of students receiving need-based Pell Grants. Uh, Brad, you talked about it. The soaring college costs today. I have a lady that works in my office. Her son's a doctor. He has got debt. Please don't write this down because I don't want Debbie to read it later, but he's got debt over a quarter of a million dollars for a young doctor. I mean, you know, unless he becomes a cosmetic surgeon in Hollywood, California, <laughs> it's going to take most of his life to pay that off. That's a real disincentive. But you know what? It's interesting. There was a reaction. This appeared in the Washington Post. The University of Maryland, the president of the University of Maryland, likes the idea. I don't know why, but he likes Obama's idea. There's some of the other colleges and universities that don't like the idea. But you know what I think? I think the College of Southern Maryland should get into it right away because you've got the best story to tell. You really do. I called up to the association this morning in Annapolis just to make sure some of these records are true. In the last five years, the cost, the increases for this college and most of the other 16 community colleges averaged 2.6% a year. 2.6%. Now let's talk about these four years. <laughs> let's talk about the publics and let's talk about the, the privates. You would save, they are at least a third percent more, and that's the publics. The privates, even more than that, triple that, if you want your child to go to a, to, to a private school. Four, per credit hour in our community colleges, $99 per credit hour. Now, you know we didn't pay that much when we went. Anyway, the publics. $238 per credit hour. The privates, this is Maryland, $986 per credit hour. If you send your children here, your grandchildren, per year, they're going to save $7,800 a year by coming here. Now, I heard, I've heard some, some of you talk about the, uh, the, the, the scholarships. I know we have taken, you know, senators get rather he hefty amounts of, uh, the delegates usually don't like this, heavy amounts of money for scholarships. We have taken, and we're giving this a priority, for those young folks, and some of them aren't so young, that go to co the College of Southern Maryland, we're giving them a priority these days. 
because that money stays here. That money supports all of this and I think makes for a safer and better community. You know, on the way up, uh, I passed those two monuments of Louis Goldstein. Remember that? God bless you all real good. You know, if he were here today, that's just what he would say. You all have done well, and God bless you all really good. God bless you. I'm uh, Delegate Tony O'Donnell, and I'm very, very pleased to be here today, I have to tell you. Um, it is true the senators do get a lot of scholarship money. Of course, some of us would just say they need all the help they can get. <laughs> but, uh, Roy, it's good to be with you today. Uh, good to be with all the dignitaries and all the folks who have come here today. And I'm very pleased uh, in my life to see kind of three things come together in this building. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, you know, i got to remark on this. Since I was about 18 years old, three of the many things in my life, and many blessings in my life, have been nuclear power, education training slash training, and politics. And for me, they all kind of come together here. And it's nice. You know, when I was 18 years old, many of you may not know, I went to high school in Middletown, Pennsylvania, and there was a little reactor accident there at Three Mile Island in 1979, the year I graduated. Now, this ties into education, not nuclear power, because I got about four or five days off of school that year. It's good stuff. <laughs> but uh, I went in the Navy. I was a Navy Master Training Specialist, and I taught advanced reactor maintenance uh, in upstate New York. And then I got out, and I uh, did an interview down here in 87 with the old Baltimore Gas and Electric Corporation at Calvert Cliffs. And, and I got offered a job there. I went to work there. And it's been a blessing in my life ever since, and it's an important component of this community. Tremendously important, Devin. So we like Calvert Cliffs. It's our nuclear power plant, and we like uh, the folks who work there. They're throughout our community. Many of them have gone to school here. And I remember in the early 90s as a supervisor at Calvert Cliffs, going to my first-line supervisor training program. Mark, you remember that one? We went to the old school down on Brooms Island Road. It was part of the Charles County Community College. If you want to see how far this college has come, take a ride down to Brooms Island. <laughs> Look at that building, Alfreda. We are so, so pleased. Well, we went through that training program back in the early 90s, and then I got out of nuclear power formally, but I got into politics. And it's been pleasing over the years to watch um, the effort at the, the community le level. I see Linda Kelly sitting here, and I remember the fights we went through in the 90s, late 90s, to transition from the Charles County Community College to a truly regional institution. And it wasn't easy, and there were a lot of fights between the three counties, but it was very pleasing, Mike, where we've come. We truly have a regional institution of higher education that we can all be proud of. And Roy, we were there uh, kind of, you were there early on with Charles County Community College, but you're right. We're here with the College of Southern Maryland and these three flags of these three counties, and we're very, very pleased. And we're looked upon at the state level, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as a model of how to do things right. So I'm pleased to be here. I'm pleased to uh, help this dedication and this ribbon cutting with my good friends throughout this community, and, uh, and I'd like to echo that sentiment. God bless you all real good. Well, I'm pleased that Senator Dyson talked about cost. You know, the average is $99 a credit. We're able to do that because of our county commissioners, the allocation. We're able to do that because of our state and the generosity of the state and understanding that many students could not afford an education otherwise. But that is, that's the foundation. To be as good as we are, we need additional help. People like Merrick Holmes and Rick Bailey who has been very, very generous. Um, found, um, endowments, the Whipples established uh, an endowment. These are wonderful partnerships, and we're always looking for additional partnerships so we can do a better job. One of our finest partnerships, one of our strongest partnerships is with Constellation and CENG. They came to us several years ago and said, we have a problem, and we want to talk to you about it. We need to hire technicians of the future, and we think you're the best partner we can find. 
And they got us involved in a program, and I want to recognize uh, Bob Gates. Bob, would you stand, please? Bob is the head of the Nuclear Energy Technician Program, did so much to get that off the ground. Um, because of their support, we worked with the Nuclear Energy um, Institute, we got the curriculum. They've given us over $300,000 for scholarships to equip our welding lab. Um, they have always been there for us. They provide tuition and fee as assistance to students. And during the summers, the students put aside their markers and their books, and they have jobs at Constellation, CENG, so they understand what it's really like to work in a nuclear energy facility, similar like uh, what uh, Gary Kessler is able to do with their engineering students in, uh, in St. Mary's County. And many, by the way, Calvert students are in that program as well. And um, one of the things that we're really proud about is not only this partnership, but one of the first facilities to be named in this building is in honor of Constellation Energy. And you'll be seeing, I don't know, the plaque I don't think is up yet, but Constellation Energy, CENG, whatever they want us to call it, Exelon, it's going to be on the wall <laughs> because this is a program we couldn't have done without their support. And it's the model. And we've, we've uh, had publications in national journals talking about this is the way higher education has to be in the future. We can't go to our students. We can't go to our elected officials across the board. We need the private sector in a win-win situation. And it, it's a perfect, perfect example. Um, representing, we're going to have two perspectives from uh, Constellation. One is, remember, we always put students first. And so we have a very special student. His name is Jonathan Varesco. He is, um, he is uh, one of the newest employees of Constellation Energy, um, graduated in our first class, and he has come to, uh, to share this event with us and to say a few words. And I don't, Jonathan, you're here? Oh, there he is, come on up. So here's Jonathan Varesco. Uh, hey, it's good to be here today. I uh, love the new building. I've seen the labs in the classroom. It's a lot better than the facility that was behind Alvin's ribs. But uh, I have a lot of time. I'm feeling some refreshments. We got a ribbon cut, so I'm going to get right to it. As Dr. Gottfried said, I was in the first graduating class of the NET program here at CSM. And I am very excited to be here today. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the journey from student to my current job as an electrician trainee in the maintenance pipeline. Uh, the year one of the program involved a lot of classroom time, a lot of classroom time with some labs thrown in. We did have some equipment. We did have a little bit of lab space. Um, just to, you know, get ourselves familiar with the equipment, get us familiar with, you know, the technical skills, some of the stuff we're going to be doing in the plant, some of the stuff we're going to be using. And then during the summer, you know, we got to intern at Calvert Cliffs for six weeks. It was a really great experience, and it really helped solidify that I personally made the right choice and a lot of other, a lot of my other students made the right choice in coming to this program when they did. It's very invigorating driving under the uh, 500 kV high lines, looking across the switchyard, looking at the two containment buildings, uh, coming in there for the first time, it's just very intimidating, it's very big, you're going to something new. And for the first time, I uh, felt like I was going to a job I wanted to do. So it really helps solidify the point that I'm glad I made the right decision in this case. Everyone in the plant was welcoming. Uh, we had good trainers. Some of them actually came back during the second year that we had in the classes at Calvert, came back and taught us at the CSM facilities. Good trainers, uh, good supervisors, good employees. Everybody was helpful. We were new. We didn't know what was going on. You know, we had questions. They had answers. They didn't have one. They found somebody who did have one. It's very supportive, very encouraging. It really felt like family down there. The, the degrees are nice. Uh, degrees help, you know, they help transferability, but the real winner here is the INPO certification that comes out of the program. For those that don't know, if you maintain a B average or higher through the entire program, all the courses, uh, since the curriculum follows the national guidelines from the Institute of Nuclear Power Operators, INPO, 
they give you a certificate that says that you're qualified by national standards to be able to go work at any nuclear power facility in the United States. And that helped me get my job currently. I now today work at the R.E. Ganae nuclear power plant. It's one of Constellation's plants, one of Calvert's sister plants up in Ontario, New York, right off the lake. Um, it's about 30 minutes east of Rochester. I live about 15 minutes uh, west of the plant in Webster. And so I went from Southern Maryland, born and raised, to I'm now up in the Great Lakes um, for at least a few years. But again, it's really great being here. It's really great seeing the new building. I wish we had it when I was here. Um, so I'm really hoping that you know, more people get hired because Calvert doesn't have all the jobs. They can't get everybody. There, because the program is just so big, it's taken off so much. It's past Constellation's expectations. It's past Bob's expectations. It's past Dr. Godfrey's expectations. It's grown so gigantic over the, I think it's the third year? fourth year. It's grown so big over the past three, four years that you know, we're going to have to go elsewhere, but I'm glad I was able to do that because you know, job to job. <laughs> Thank you. And I suspect Jonathan will be back in uh, Calvert Cliffs probably within a few years. I was supposed to introduce at the same time um, another special partner, and that's George Gelrich. I think many of you know him. He's the site vice president for a constellation and CNG to provide some remarks. George? I think the first thing we need to do is uh, recognize Jonathan as the product. And he's representative today of all the students. We've had 16 graduates we hired down at Calvert. And I tell you, he's representative of uh, what you guys have created. So I think it's worth a standing ovation because I thought it was a great speech. <laughs> So I'm actually not going to talk about the bricks and mortar, and I think you can tell from Jonathan. Uh, what this program is really uh, producing is something that was created long before I got here and long before a lot of you got here. Uh, Calvert County is just a great place to develop a workforce. Uh, when Calvert Cliffs was built back in the uh, 70s, late 60s and early 70s, they decided to build that plan here partly because of the workforce. And I can tell you, over the years, we've had a lot of great folks develop a culture down at Calvert Cliffs that's dedicated to being professional, well-trained, and protecting the health and safety of the public and provide cheap, clean energy to the United States. And we've done a good job of that. Now, I'm representing CNG, but I'm also representing Day Zimmerman, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and the other 72 nuclear power plants in the industry. And as you can tell, these students are going out not only to Calvert, but other, other places in the country. It's a great program. And I want to especially recognize, uh, Tony hit on it, it's really a great collaboration um, from the folks uh, at CENG who really made this happen. Uh, Jim Rutkowski, uh, Mark Simpson, and the like. Um, we've got a lot of instructors and, and uh, uh, technicians down at the plant that come up and teach, so that's the business part of it. Uh, education, Dr. Godfrey and, and Dr. Fleming, they're the ones that had the vision, really pulled it all together, worked with us, saw it was a great idea and moved on. And then the county commissioners and all the government officials, just a great collaboration. We saw what, what, what was important and we created it. And really, the result is people like Jonathan. Um, I'm here to tell you that the folks we've hired down at the plant are a really high caliber. Those folks have come in. Uh, Bob Gates and the instructors have just done fantastic, not only teaching them the technical pieces, but literally, you know, how to do a job, how to do it right. I think Tony can attest to it. Um, it it's not just about having a technical piece, but you have to have that uh, critical thinking. You've got to be professional and you've got to be dedicated. And the students coming out of there, they're energized, they're positive. During the inter internship, we get to see how they work. They get to see the different jobs available. I mean, we have 900 jobs down there. Um, even if they don't want to stick with the technical program, there's other jobs they see and they get into it. So it has just been fantastic. Um, all the businesses are very appreciative of this. We recognize the value of this. We, you know, we've all contributed to the building itself. We all contribute to the uh, 
to the tuition and helping the students get through this uh, in an economically fair way. And uh, we just are very, very thankful to everybody for supporting us. And we're very glad to be the recipients of the products that you've uh, given us here. Thank you. Well, there are two other groups I'd like to recognize before I call uh, Dr. Fleming up. One is the, you've heard from, um, I guess, Mike Middleton about the team that we have and how important that team is. I'd like the vice presidents to stand who work with me uh, at the College of Southern Maryland be recognized, please. Thank you. And a special thank you to our employees in the trenches. These are people in the classroom, our faculty, our staff, who care so deeply about our students. And I want to thank them and I want to recognize them. Please all stand who are employees of the college. Don't be shy, come on. Thank you. You're the ones who make CSM very special. Uh, last, and certainly not least, I want to recognize a person who worked very closely with the architects, Grim and Parker, with, uh, with Tommy and um, GFG construction with uh, county government, and that's Dr. Richard Fleming. He needs no introduction. You know how passionate this gentleman is. This is his baby. You are in his, his uh, special place. He has lived this, this moment for many, many years. And I just want to thank him sincerely for his hard work and his diligence. Uh, this was not an easy project, as I mentioned, but his perseverance, his vision, his ability to get things done really did shine through. And I don't think we would be here today if it weren't for his um, diligence and perseverance. So I'm going to call Dr. Rich Fleming up to give the final remarks. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate that very much. Um, this is really a very special day. Um, I want to start off, a number of thanks have already been given, but I do want to start off uh, thanking our legislators uh, for the funding and the support you gave me. I particularly want to thank our commissioners. I'm glad that Commissioner Kelly, former Commissioner Kelly is here. I was hoping we'd have a Commissioner Stennett and Commissioner Perrin, but they're not here. Uh, they were the ones who worked with Commissioner Clark and Commissioner Shaw and who gave us the go-ahead with this. And then, of course, our other commissioners have joined us since then, and they've continued to support us with this, not only uh, uh, psychologically, but also with funding. Um, so I do want to thank you, and I do want to go on record with the commissioners that we have been absolutely serviced tremendously by inspections and permits. <laughs> <laughs> if you live in Calvert County, you understand the joke. <laughs> but I am very, very serious about that. When we were actually ready to start breaking ground, the uh, Department of the Environment came by and said, here's your permit, get started. Tommy took his check down to the county, paid our tap fee, and that afternoon we had our permit to start construction. And then all along the way, we had our inspectors coming through, of course, but we got down to the wire and we uh, had a question about some electrical uh, inspections and the inspectors made a special trip out. They sat down with us, with the contractor, with the architects. We all sat and said we worked out a resolution to it. We made those corrections and they came back and they said here it is and you don't know what a happy day that was. <laughs> also we had, uh, you know, there were some issues with grading and the grading inspector said, we understand you can't fill this big pit in out here until the <laughs> Department of the Environment tells you so. And he said, we know that you're going to do it. So we have absolutely been serviced very well by inspections and permits. And when they came out, I said, if I ever get a chance to tell the commissioners, I'm going to tell you. So I do want to go on record that we have been very well served by them. So I want to thank them. Um, certainly it was mentioned uh, this was by no means a, an individual effort. This was an effort of hundreds of people. Uh, we started uh, in 2010 with this design process, and we started initially with Kieran and with Tony. Uh, we sat down, we started working our way through a variety of designs. This is not an expensive building. This is only about ten and a half million dollars, and we had to work within those constraints, and we started like this, and we had to keep getting like this. <laughs> And so you have to figure out how can we get everything that we need in here to maximize the square footage. 
and I think they've done a very, very good job of doing that. Uh, I always kid everybody, I had Mercedes taste and a Chevy budget, but we worked very well within that, and I hope as you look around uh, that we've given uh, you something that the county that you can be proud of. Uh, but I do particularly want to recognize Tony, I want to recognize Kieran, I want to recognize Dave. Dave probably got where he said, oh my gosh, here's another email. And, but he always responded to us. And particularly, I want to thank Tony, uh, Tommy, for coming. I had to beg him to come. Tommy's ready to get out of here. He has a son who's in the Army down in Texas, and he wants to go visit him. But uh, he came today. And I would like to thank Tommy. Uh, he and his brother Frank, they built Barstow down the road from us. And when we got the contract with them, I talked to George Lee. Many of you know George at the Calvert County Public Schools. He said, Rich, he said, you're very lucky to have those two guys building this building for you. He said, they care about quality. He said, they care about what they do. He said, and they will continue to support you. And he said, but, he said, do you ever watch, do you ever listen to car talk? And I said, yep. He said, they're just like click and clack. <laughs> But we've worked really well. We had kind of a standing joke. You know, a lot of mornings I'd walk into the trailer, Tommy'd roll his eyes and say, what now, Rich? <laughs> but particularly, you know, my staff here locally, uh, when we started this design process, we tried to include everybody who had a hand in this. We included IT, we included AV, we included facilities, full-time, part-time instructors, students, we asked him to continually keep evaluating and reevaluating what we needed with this. We started classes last Tuesday, and uh, the instructors, and I'm hearing from faculty, they're really very pleased with it. So again, thanks to all of you, uh, particularly uh, my group here locally, uh, my facilities crew, my ITAV crew, my assistant, everybody in my office. Uh, it was a long effort to get here, and in fact, uh, we were actually, we had done everything two weeks before classes started, and then we spent time refining it. So we're very, very pleased with it. Uh, I want to recognize, just I want to ask him to stand, but I've got some of my fellow Rotarians here from my club. Thank you for your support. I'm glad you're here. I appreciate that. Uh, and one last thing, many of you know my wife, Jean, and Jean has been living with this for two and a half years, and she's probably heard more than she cares about to know about this building. <laughs> But I'd come home, and she'd listen, and we'd talk and go through it. So she said, so now what are you going to do? <laughs> and I said, well, we got to get it working. So I do want to appreciate that. Um, but we've had a lot of people with this. And you know, as mentioned, this is LEED certified. That means that we have worked to achieve a certain level of energy and water usage. This has some unique features. Uh, one, we have four green roofs which if you take tours, you'll be able to see the green roofs. And in fact, we're under a green roof right now. And a green roof is literally that. It's actual living plant material. It sits on top of a special type of uh, dirt and soil. And 90% of the water that hits that roof is absorbed into that plant material. And of course, our goal is to reduce and minimize water runoff since we are so close to the, to the bay and the river. And you know, we've planted it. and. You do a little bit of work to it, but we haven't had to do much to it since then. So you'll be able to see it. Uh, it changes colors with the season. So that's going to be exciting. The building is, <laughs> we're still learning how to work this building. It's kind of like if you remember 2001, the Space Odyssey. It was like, open the door, Hal. I can't do that, Dave. <laughs> and yeah, we kind of feel that way in this building because everything is computer controlled. The lights are computer controlled. The, the energy is computer control, but we can set this and we're able to minimize and maximize. We have CO2 sensors that senses if something's building up, it's probably building up right now in this room. And it'll actually adjust, it brings in fresh air. Uh, a lot of the materials had to be recycled, so even though we had to take out a lot of trees, they were recycled into lumber or they were turned into mulch. Uh, all of the material that left the plant, the waste product, had to go to a special recycle. It had to be certified that we had turned that in. And so much of the material, some 80% or more of this material was recycled. The materials in the building, uh, again, the goal is clean air. And so all the solvents, the paints, everything had to be uh, special type. Uh, all the products, many of the products here are recycled materials. 
So there's a lot that goes on here to make this a very clean air building. We had to go through two flushes to remove all the air and the material through this. And so I think it's going to be a very, very good building. We're still learning how to work it and adjust it, but we're very, very pleased with it. But the one thing that was mentioned, you know, those of you who have been here long enough know about room 119 in the flagship building. And that's the biggest room we had on campus. It's about 1,000 square feet. And in fact, it's about as big as the space between these two columns. So that was the biggest room we had on campus. Now we've got over 3,000 square feet. Uh, we would never have been able to have anything like this in the past. Uh, this will be space, as was mentioned, we'll continue our partnerships with our nonprofits, with our governmental, with our state agencies, uh, customized contract training, continuing education. But I've had people come up to me and say, are you going to rent it out? And the answer is no. This is not available for private social functions. We have our partners down in the Solomons. We have our partners here in Prince Frederick. We have our partners up in the beaches. And that's what they're there for. But we will only partner and work with those groups which have an educational interest in part with us. And so we're very, very excited about this. Uh, we can get, do a little bit of demonstration. This is, and I don't think I'm saying this, I hope, uh, being egotistical, this is the best meeting space we got in all of Calvert County. Uh, it's all fully multimedia equipped, and we can show you some things about that. But this is going to offer us a tremendous amount of opportunity. Uh, as was mentioned, for years we've had uh, the Ward Virts concert series, and we have uh, Dr. Virts and his wife here. I'm glad with that. They're helping fund it. And we also have Ed and Patty Mahusky. They are also funders of it this year. It's a six-part concert series. Uh, our first one is October 6th with Brian Gans. We hoped to be in the building last May, but we were not. Uh, and Brian graciously agreed to come back. So Brian will be our kickoff host for the very first performance in this space here. And as was mentioned, the Burzendorfer is right over there. It has its own private room. You do not know the angst that we went through when we moved a $200,000 piano for only about 200 yards. <laughs> but we were very glad when it got there, and uh, even Stephen Johnson, our music director, came over and he played it. He said it's out of tune, but it's in great shape. So, <laughs> so we're very pleased about that. And finally, it'll be able to be taken care of as it should. It has its own air conditioner, humidifier to control it. So we're very excited about uh, the first concert with Brian. Um, but we also were planning uh, other types of art events in here. Uh, we'll be having some additional plays. We'll be having some additional musical groups. Uh, we are partnering with Calvert uh, Marine Museum and Jefferson Patterson Park for a six-part lecture series on the War of 1812. As you know, next year is the Bicentennial. Uh, the first one will be this Sunday, uh, and so that'll be kind of our first official event in this room here. So we hope you'll uh, be able to join us uh, when you come. Um, but I do want to thank also uh, the Campus Builders Club members. These are people who make donations to the college for scholarships. As was mentioned, we may be an economical institution, but there are many of our students who still cannot afford the tuition. Many of our students receive Pell Grants, but they still need additional support with that. And so through the help of our foundation, through the help of our partnership with uh, CENG, and through the help of all of our donors, we are able to provide scholarships. But I can tell you right now, we're not able to provide as many as we need. We had to turn away something like, Michelle, you're here, 200, 400 students last year. 400. We were not able to provide scholarships to 400 of our students last year. So again, you know, this is the type of partnership we have. The one thing that we do have coming up, October the 19th, we have our gala here which is an electrifying evening with the arts and sciences. That'll be October 19th. Uh, it is a fundraiser for scholarships. Uh, we have uh, some of our people who are working locally. We'll be having a big silent auction. Uh, we'll be having a dance. Um, we will have open bars and lots of good food. So we hope that you will uh, take a look at it. There is information out on the table. You're going to receive it when you leave. So we're hoping that you'll be here, and every dollar that we raise goes, as for, goes for scholarships. So we appreciate all the help of everyone who has helped us with that. 
Um, but just a few things in closing here. Uh, I need to mention that uh, when you leave, there are some recycled bags that you can pick up, uh, little handbags. They are recyclable. Uh, I also want to thank our Student Government Association. Uh, it is a nice hot day, but when you go outside, there's an ice cream truck or an ice cream trailer. Uh, our student government provided this to us, so please help yourself. There will also be refreshments, uh, cookies, uh, Kool-Aid, et cetera, or, uh, iced tea, et cetera, out in the uh, lobby itself. Uh, I also want to thank our student government for our brass plaque. Uh, they contributed to that, so we're very pleased to have that. It's kind of a unique feature. But uh, what I'd like to do now, we're ready for the ribbon cutting. So the ribbon we're cutting today is really kind of a special ribbon. Uh, it was made for us by the staff down at Anne Marie Gardens. We had a dedication for their new building, and I said, God, that's a really pretty ribbon. And so they said, we can make you one. And so the ribbon that we're doing today was handmade by them. So it's kind of a different ribbon. What we're going to do, if you'd like to, you can come and we'll slice off a kind of a bookmarker size piece for you uh, to take with you uh, if you'd like to. So we'll also have some tours. Uh, Ricardo, or me, are you here anywhere? Okay. Uh, we have uh, some folks will be taking you on a tour. You cannot miss Ricardo. Look for the tallest, biggest person around here. <laughs> and we'll be taking tours, and also I'll be glad to take people on tours if you'd like to. So what I'd like to do now is invite uh, our elected officials, our trustees, uh, foundation directors, speakers. Uh, we'd like the architects, Tommy, you as well too. Uh, we're going to go out front, we're going to cut the ribbon. So if you would join us out in the front door now, this is the one time you're going to have to go out in the heat, but we promise we'll make it quick. So thank you all for coming.